animators and artists. Sarah Zatar is a 2D rigging artist and animator with experience at studios such as Sphere Animation, Yauza, and M2 Animation. In her personal time, Sarah built a character rig based on the character Nadja from FX's What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, the character rig is now available to download on Gumroad, and we invited Sarah to discuss her rig and career as a rigging artist. So, Sarah, welcome to the stream. Thank you. Hi, guys. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's good to have you here. So, um, Sarah, I wanted to start just by asking, um, how would you describe your path to becoming a rigging artist? What made you choose this field? Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I started my college studies as a graphic designer. And then I saw an opportunity to start a college of game development, which I finished the graduation. Uh, then to enhance my expertise, I did a six-month course of um, animation and rigging with the Tubum software. Um, after that, I could enter in a local studio uh, here in Brazil, um, and I started the animation. Uh, I started only animating. Um, after five, six months, maybe, I started to only rig the characters. And well, I can tell you that I love rigging. <laughs> I like to animate, but rigging is the the thing that that I, that, that I love. <laughs> and it opened my, um, many doors at international studios. So here I am. <laughs> All right. So um, the rig that you have to share with us today is based on uh, a live action series. Um, what was it about this rig or the, the, the character that made you want to rig her as, as a 2D animated character? Mm, well, I finished a show called What You Do in the Shadows. And well, that show is awesome. It's very funny. And I thought, well, I, I can rig and I can make characters. So, and I can animate too. So I thought I'm going to do the, the, the rig of all the characters and select some funny scenes of the show and make small clips, small animations of, of them. I think that would be very awesome. <laughs> and as an artist working in the industry, it can be difficult to show current work uh, yeah. from stuff from your day job because a lot of it would tend to be NDA and also <laughs> NDA. And this this also is great, but it's, it's NDA. <laughs> yeah, the, the portfolio day passed and uh, many people shared um, a, a very funny picture it was uh what yay uh, portfolio day i'm gonna share my work and it was all blank <laughs> blank space <laughs> blank, blank space <laughs> um, so yeah it's very difficult i was in a one month uh, one year and three months uh nda contract so i i don't have things to show um and well, I, I need to show things, right? Because I need to, to find new jobs, new new shows to, to work on. So I I, I felt the, the rush of making um, a, a rig of my own, a, a very complete, and, and to share to everybody because I, I want to people to animate my things and I wanna share that too. <laughs> yeah, I also wanna take a, a quick moment before we really get into the rig. Mm -hmm. um, to talk about like the character design that you went with, uh, okay. because this is this is a really interesting interpretation of the character. Um, it, it's possible to like take a vampire and go with a really like straightforward uh, interpretation, uh, where you have a pale, pale character and you make them pale. You took a pale character and you made them blue. What was the <laughs> sort of thought behind that? Well, um, first of all, I thought. Mm, the, the 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 pale skin is very very common, and you can do a, a human human being with a pale skin too. So, I thought that um, I needed to to pick a color that could show the the death. You know that the character is dead. So I was between the. Um, the blue, um, a little bit greenish, I don't know, but, but I thought the, the blue was was very fine, so I picked that. The same for the, the tongue. Her tongue is, mm, let me show you, her tongue is green. And I thought the two, because uh, her lips are red, and I I need to make, a, a, to pick a color that can be very, uh, that have a contrast 
between the, the, the mouth, the, the skin and the lips. So I think is that, oh, and I, I pick a lot of different colors, right? The, the, the line art uh, isn't black and mm -hmm. most of the line art are um, lighter than the, the color of the, the item. Uh, same for the underwear here. <laughs> I think that, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So let's get into it. Um, if I was an animator and you were introducing me to this rig, what would you start by showing me? Okay. Um, the first thing I was going to show you was that uh, she has legs <laughs> and a funny underwear too. <laughs> and I, I was going to share with you too um, the way that I did the, um, the shoulders. They act like a balloon when you <laughs> you make her arms go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because Nadja uses a lot of um, a buffon clothes. I, I think that's the the word buffon. Uh, all the the skirts are are big. Her shoulders pads are bigger. Her head is enormous too. So I thought that it would be very funny to to make her shoulder pad do, doing that. <laughs> well. It can break, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you you cannot use the the way right, only for for uh, squish and stretch in in the limit, and then uh, use the other peg to to move the arm. That's interesting. So um, for the uh, the shoulder, um, what's the, uh, the like mechanically? What's going on there? Is that a constraint? Yeah. Let me show you here. I used a two-point constraint here. All right. Because of the shape was uh, is very different. Um, it's what it was very hard to find the 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 correct point of the pivot to make the the scratch going just right. You know, uh, it was very very difficult to do that <laughs> but i <laughs> i manage <laughs> no I, I think it's a really clever solution <laughs> oh other thing that that i would show you of course would be the bed transformation <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah um this thing um this controller it's it's fun, but it has a um, a little thing that uh, animate the animator should should look at because um, I used um, a transparency node to make it happen, but if you click, you can grab Nadia's because she's transparent, right? So you need to uncheck Nadia, <laughs> and then. Wait, yeah, here, here. Oh, okay, you need to uncheck Nadia so the 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 bat will be okay <laughs> without the, a bigger uh, rig behind. Uh, that is uh, my, my mind is exploding right now. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing too is that um, her head turns and the um, the lips uh change too with the the head turning right the the controller um, well, that's clever yeah and you only have I, I did a flip on the head um i did a i think a thing that is very is called gambiarra here at brazil it's a thing that is very <laughs> you know um um it's a thing that it's out of the the common way, you know. I did only three mouth shapes uh, visions, but I flipped her head. Um, I didn't need to make all her lips in all the uh, eight positions of the 
I mean, eight, no, one, two, three. Uh, yes, not six mouths, five mouths, only three. <laughs> mm, other thing that is nice is the controller of the head. Uh, mm. it, it goes to with the, um, the flip. Um, a small flip you, you can see here, right? The the yeah. uh, quarter front, front and quarter front again for the lips to to work. Yeah, you can make a little flip here. Well, I I love this controller. Once I I learned to do that, I do in all my, my all my rigs. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, it can be a really great time-saving uh, way of getting a, a character into a, a, a pose quickly. Yeah. Um, I also noticed that you had a head turn and body turn controls, too. Yeah. Only her head, the top body, and all the turn. Here. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, the book, too, I only, do, only did... Um, one blink um, for all her head. Um, this blink is nice for the front and the quarter front because I squished the, um, the eye like this. Ah. And at the master controller, I unchecked the, the, um, the screw um uh, option of the peg let me show you oh it's better if i show you here. i'm really interested in this uh, here. Here. well the blink let me see um uh, the eye here no, it's not this one. No, it is this one. Um, there is five options here. I, I deleted one. I don't know which one I deleted. Let me see. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I, I can find right now because I did a, a, a month ago. Because, uh, but when you, you delete um, some options of the peg on the, the master controller, you can right. make the things happen in a, in a different way. Uh, I mean, the master controller here doesn't, uh, of the her uh, three, three cars front, doesn't um, catch uh, this, this scale. Oh, yes, I, I deleted the scale. Uh, from the peg at the master mm -hmm. controller. So this is how it, it works. Yeah. Here's one, and here is uh, 0.85, yeah. That's a, it's That's a clever a way of building a rig quickly. What? It's a it's a clever way of building a rig. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh, small things like that in the, in this rig. I learned a lot in the the past two years of rigging in many different studios. So Nadia has all the the things that I learned. <laughs> Without um, naming uh, <laughs> uh, any specific studios, uh, mm. what do you find is different uh, working studio to studio? Mm. Um, well, the, the, the way that you upload the files, first of all, <laughs> all studios has something different, but, <laughs> but I think that is the... Um, uh, the need of the master controller. Some studios need a lot, many, you know, the rig is heavy and others doesn't like any master controllers. I think it's that because all the, um, uh, the construction of the rig is all the same. Uh, I, I didn't found any, any different, uh, alarming difference. Di difference. 
but I learned a lot with them. All studios have some something, you know, some some little secrets <laughs> that you can learn from it. So this character rig has uh, five views and is then flipped. Uh, yeah. Which of the views was the most interesting or challenging to to build? Mm, I uh, I think this one, quarter mm. front back. Especially when you are doing the the character design, I hate this this view. <laughs> it's very diff um, difficult to make a, a a nice quarter front back view, and that has expression, right? But I think yeah, this one because I mean, it's important to... for acting too, right? Like if you want to yeah. have um, a scene that's believable, if everybody's staring into the camera. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it feels staged. Yeah, but but I think this view is the more uh, difficult. It's not difficult, right? But the, uh, it's more difficult than the others because the arm should move. You, you should move all the arms in a three D way. The, the 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 legs. Oh, the face should be uh, covered by her face. Her head. Um, sh her face should be covered by her head. Or maybe only half of the face will be showing. I think it, um, I think uh, is, is this view right? That's cool. Uh, we got a question from the audience. Okay. Uh, King Andev wants to know. Um, he's trying to make his own character mm -hmm. and wants to know uh, how much drawing is involved in rigging. Uh, oh. So when you rig a character, what, what sorts of things do you need to know how to draw? I, okay. I've got some thoughts on this too. Uh, yeah. So if you are rigging by your own and make the character by your own, you should know how to draw, especially hands. Um, know the the dimensions of the the face you know the um the the um the space between the eyes between nose and eyes mouth you should know uh, these things to make a, a pleasant face a pleasant uh, character um other thing i think is that you should know um where to put some some parts of the body, the, the joints, uh, the elbows, the knees. The knee can be too low or too high. Uh, the same for the, the elbows. The elbows can be at the, the chest. It can be at the almost the, the end of the arm. It should be at the middle. <laughs> a lesser character would be something different. I don't know. But um, it's nice to know how to draw, but, but know the... Um, the uh, the where put where to put the the parts of the body. Speaking of hands, um, I saw that you have twenty three hand poses in this rig. Can you talk about some of the different uh, drawing substitutions that you've included? Uh, wait, I don't know if I understood right the question. Can you repeat? It? Okay. Um, so I saw that on your rig you have like 23 different hand poses. Yeah. Do you want to uh, talk about some of the different uh, drawing substitutions and um, um, what they're for? Okay. So um, I did them all with this, uh, this guide here. So you can flip over the... Uh, all them. You can uh, substitute all, all the drawings uh, without a problem. So uh, here, this one is for the turn, right? Then I did, um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. I did some, some um, useful hands. Um, uh, yeah, some useful hands. Uh, the turn opened, the turn closed. Um, I did this this two here for the, um, the animation that I did at the end of my demo reel, her hand doing this. 
um, a fist, okay? Nadia is very angry, so I, I should do a, a fist one. <laughs> and the points, yeah, the points, uh, a little metal hand. <laughs> Yeah, with with a turn, right? So you can use in in different ways the hands. But I did. Um, I, I should do more hands. The, the there's a lot of hands that that I miss, especially the hands that are holding things. I need to do that. This this type of hand, uh, grabbing. I don't know a, a can, grabbing anything. I get a lot of too. questions from uh, from artists who are curious about like, hey, do I need to draw if I'm going to be animating and cut out animation? And uh, my answer is, you probably want to draw hands pretty well because uh, <laughs> yeah. you know you never know when you need a hand and it's not in the rig yeah. and you need to uh, either uh, pose the hand into a different shape uh, or yeah. just draw a new one. Yeah, you must do a lot of hands. Um, Sometimes the, the animators um, don't know how to draw because they don't don't do the the frame by frame animation, right? Mm. They only do the cutout animation. So sometimes the animators uh, aren't used to to draw because of that. But the hands are very important. They they are like faces, you know. They they have expressions. Yeah, I, I think if you're able to draw hands and faces really well, uh, that's job security. It's good to yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, in your opinion, was the most challenging or rewarding part of this rig to build? Mm, I think it was very re rewarding when I finished the, the bad farm controller. <laughs> because you know i only did this rig for the bad form <laughs> so i was very um secured that i was going to to do that in a in a good way but i had some some issues with the transparency node um you saw the problem here right when yeah. she transferred in a bed she she's still here on the transfer, so <laughs> I, I, I needed to, to 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 make a new new other controller to to go in around this problem. It was hiding Nigel. <laughs> I think and, one of the really cool things about rigging is that you sort of have this um, this problem solving process, right? Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm able to do this, but now I need to deal with with you know X Y Z. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And other thing that I'm always happy about when I finish a rig is this controller here. I already tell you, I love this this controller here. And sometimes it's difficult to do this controller because of the design, but it's always pleasure. It's always a pleasure to to make it in the right way. And 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 see other people do it using this controller. Yeah, those are very smooth transitions too with that uh, mm. that that the um, controller too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one of the questions we get sometimes is like, oh, is that animation? And like the answer is like, no, that it's, it's posing. You know, it's it's a starting yeah. point for the. Yeah. Um, character animator, you still need to know what you're doing when you're animating the character, even if you have all the best controllers there. Oh, um, yeah. But it saves time. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends, uh, animator friends, that hate master controllers because they, they say, well, um, the other animators um, will not explore the rig as much as mm. they could because they have the master controller rig strict. I, I can say this word, restricting them. Um, so he always delete the master controller of them the, of these rigs. <laughs> but you know, as you as you um, said, uh, the master controller are, is here for help, not to animate. You cannot 
Oh my God, you can't animate something only with master controllers. It will be only robots. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice. The master controller doesn't have an expression, right? It's not a artistic. The master controller is only a control. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that's the interesting thing about um, cutout animation is when you see really, really good cutout animation, uh, it's not the sort of thing that you can uh, replicate by like moving a slider around. Like it yeah, is, yeah. it is just like frame by frame animation, but yeah. with a different technique. Yeah, you know, like it, it has just as much artistry, just as much yeah. um, skill involved, and mm -hmm. I, I think that you can get really cool results, uh, including at some of the studios that you've worked at. I've seen really cool animation <laughs> yeah. from, uh, let's see, Yauza and uh, Sphere, uh, in particular, I think, are, are studios that do really cool work. Yeah, they they don't have master controllers, I think. I, I think I didn't saw any controller in, in them rigs, in their rigs, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you actually, and this is kind of related, uh, what do you enjoy the most about your job? What do you enjoy the most about like creating rigged characters for 2D animation? Uh, I love to see them animated, you know? <laughs> It's nice to make a, a rig. Ah, oh, as I, I tell you earlier, um, I, I make rigs to to um, to people animate, right? I don't make rigs to put in a box and and close it forever. So it's very fun, very nice, very rewarding when you see your rig in a TV screen doing I don't know some. Um, action scene, <laughs> fighting someone, you know, doing some unusual poses is very fun when, uh, when I saw this happen. So I think one of the really cool things about this rig is you've taken this rig and put it on Gumroad uh, so other artists can download it and play around with it. I've talked to some artists who've um publish their rigs and then see those rigs out in the wild uh have you had that experience yet oh uh, not yet but i wish i could <laughs> people download nadia <laughs> animate nadia please <laughs> what um, made um, you want to uh share this rig publicly um oh because of of, of this thing that uh, i tell you I did Nadia for a, a personal purpose, only for do my demo reel, for for do uh, for make little animations of um, of the the series, right? But I want to to see people go crazy with Nadia. That's it. <laughs> I made her with a lot of love, a lot of effort. So I went to see some bizarre things going on with her. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the really cool things uh, in uh, animation is uh, you, if you do publish like rigs, you do see them get used. Like um, yeah. you're talking about how you saw uh, rigs of, um, Cubum Lee's Olive character and yeah. like Sonic the Hedgehog and that <laughs> uh, Smiles Bunny that Nick Paris uh, designed and Jordan Beatty rigged. Uh, together. Like the characters, <laughs> yeah. Uh, they don't make any sense as characters <laughs> together, but it's kind of cool to see people yeah. put them into their demo reels. Um, mm. <laughs> and, it's very and have them in scenes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, we got a question um, from Standard Deviant, uh, who's asking uh, the head controller, the head angle controller is uh, sick. Uh, am I understanding right that the controller is linked to subcontrollers for parts of the face? Um, Sarah, uh, how did you construct the uh, the grid controller for the face? Okay, let me show you. Like this. Mm, I can even um, do a little. Mm. 
Apply poses, okay. One second. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this okay. process is really cool too. So I'm yeah. glad we got a chance to uh, go over it. Okay. Uh, here. Okay, I did uh, these keyframes here. You can see that uh, her lips uh, flip, right? So because of that, I had to make um, a point on the grid like this with the 0.01 um, position and minus 0.01 for um they could so in, in this way they can be very close to each other and and make a a smooth a flip you know yeah you get the, the the illusion of the full uh head turn even though you only have to make half of it yeah oh no okay. yeah so it was a normal top and bottom face, yeah. And yeah. I put um, a image switch too in some uh, on her lips and her face, her head, um, and to do this thing here to make the the controller of her lip change with the movements of the head angle controller i wait i wish oh yeah yes uh i did this i put a keyframe on the image switch and i put all the, the the head and this image switch on the master controller uh options right here on the image switch you can uh name the 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 draws do you, do you understand what i mean yeah <laughs> you can name it the draws uh, and it puts uh, the keyframe in the right position if the the right uh, value of the drawing i don't know if i am uh, explaining in a in a clearly way I think it might also be worth zooming out and just saying like the way that the the grid master controller works is that you you have like a grid of pictures and you can rearrange uh, the pieces of the rig uh, for each of the the, the, the the frames of the grid, um, which lets you move a slider around that uh, has it interpolated. It, it, it sort of picks like halfway points between the different poses. Uh, yeah. which which makes it turn into a really smooth rotation. You can get yeah. like really wild um, face uh, posing tools using uh, the, the the grid wizard and yeah. you get people asking things like is that 3D and it's it's, it's not 3D it's um, using yeah. just like 2D geometry and math. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my master controllers are, are very fun to to watch. They are a little bit hard to 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 do at the first time in the first eleven times, <laughs> but is is rewarding when you finally get the point to make the the master controller work on the the first try. Yeah, um, I want to ask you, uh, what are some common misconceptions about character rigs that you've encountered? Mm, let me see. Um, well, over the years, at my beginning at uh, rigging, uh, I didn't use many uh, keyboard shortcuts as I could. I, actually, I hated them. I, I like to click buttons like um, Neanderthal. <laughs> you know? Now my, my keyboard has keyboard shortcut for everything and my work work my 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 time of working is over the the moon you know um my work is very faster with the keyboard shortcuts 
so use them and change the 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 shortcuts that the the software give you put some some um some that you like more um but use them um other thing i think is um that a, a good master controller doesn't need to have a big hood with a lot of uh, drawings and you know a, a big um um canvas you know doesn't need to do that um this thing is very nice for demo reels for show show your 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 work is very nice but in a project you you don't need to use that you know especially when you have too many characters in the same scene imagine five characters with five big hoods at the same time is too much for the eye. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't do it's that. Like two anymore. characters in the corner and then just like <laughs> massive control panels. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to, to do that. Only for for showcase your your work, then then it's fine. <laughs> but I think it, are these two? Probably there are more, but I I, I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think to that point, too, um, it matters a lot uh, what the rig is for. Mm -hmm. Like uh, a, a rig that you make for a personal project is going to be different than a rig yeah. that is like a main character rig for a series. Yeah. It's going to be different than an incidental character that you have on a series. You know, you yeah. don't need to have a full master controller if mm -hmm. you have a character who's just going to be behind a table. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They probably don't even need legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, one thing I want to ask. So you uh, created a character with a dress who has legs as well. Yeah. Um, what made you want to do that extra little bit of effort to have like the full legs modeled as well? Mm, well, because, well, everybody has legs, right? <laughs> And for animate, for I think that for um, for do any animation, I, I should do legs for her. Uh, doesn't make sense only doing her skirt without anything underneath. And of course, I thought in some scenes of Nadia. Um, um, uh, sitting down and her her skirt doing a, a flaps, you know, doing some crazy things and her legs showing up underwear under it. Um, that's why <laughs> I, I yeah, was no. thinking of the, the 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 possibilities of the animation. I also think that like it imposes uh, some amount of structure too, right? Like mm -hmm. you are clearly thinking about well, what's going on um with the legs yeah. uh so you don't just have the feet appearing at like random points you 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 understand like and i think this is getting back to the like proportions that you're talking about too where you yeah. have to know like how elbows work um <laughs> how like the distance between <laughs> eyes go i i think if you yeah. think about like the structure of the character mm -hmm. uh then you kind of have to wonder like well how how structurally is that working yeah yeah that's true um, I wanted to ask, like, as a rigging artist, uh, are there tools in Harmony Premium that you find are really mm -hmm. useful that rigging artists should be familiar with? Mm -hmm. um, let me think. Um, um, I think... Um, well, the Harmony Premium has the deformation, right? And many types of deformation. I think they are just fine. You can you can do whatever you want with the, the forms. You can do a, a square and a, put a deformation with many points you want and make, I don't know, a butterfly, um, anything, you know? I think the... the, trans, the, the uh, envelope to our is is awesome. Mm, 
other thing that I, I really like about uh, the premium is the possibility of using many nodes of editing, of um, editing, no, uh, it's um, effects, nodes of effects. I think they are awesome. And I don't know how many they are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many uh, features um, of uh, effects Tumbum has, but I never use them all. I, I don't even know what many are for, you know. <laughs> Tumbum has many things. <laughs> um, uh, so many um, options, you know, it's awesome, awesome. Yeah, when you get into compositing, things can get really wild too. Um, but I, I think it's interesting too to like hear from your point of view too as, as a rigging artist. Uh, are there sorts of effects that you like including on rigs? Uh, I sorry, I didn't understand the question. Sorry, uh, so, so, so you're mentioning like uh, that you, you you like exploring the different like effects uh, yeah. and, and different nodes that are in harmony. Um, mm -hmm. Are there some effects that you really like using on rigs? Yeah, um, the first of them uh, is the blending. You can make like Photoshop, you know, multiply, awesome darken, lighten the, the color. It's awesome. Um, other thing that I really love and use a lot is the aesthetic transformation. Awesome, saves lives. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you you see, you, um, I have a lot here, here. <laughs> I use I use it a lot. Um, let me think another one. Um, oh, the kinematic output, it's awesome too. I use this, use it a lot with the 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 point constraint, the two point constraint. I use these uh, these nodes a lot. Uh, transparency too, <laughs> especially on this rig. <laughs> mm, yeah, I think uh, I think these these ones. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, do you have advice for our animation students who are interested in working as a rigging artist? Mm, okay, so don't be afraid of the node view. It can be a friend <laughs> sometime. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit harsh at the beginning. So if you are going to rig uh, for the first time, you start with a simple rig. Then as you learn the tools, you can increase the complexity of, of the rigs. Um, the press, the process in this way uh, can be much more re rewarding, you know, because it's, it's easier. So you don't be uh, frustrated with the, the fail fails. So start small, then grow big, you know. Um, another thing um, is... Um, be organized, <laughs> you know. When you do um, a node view, you you can you you should be very organized. Um, you you should um, make a space between the drawings, between the nodes. Um, you should know where the cable of the drawing of the node are going. So uh, you don't want. Um, a, um, a house of birds, you know, in a, in a <laughs> in the node view. <laughs> you should open the node view, find something, and know right away where it's going, what what it is doing. So that's it. Be organized and start small, grow big. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, in um, uh, a lot of like Canadian and American studios, they'll call it spaghetti in the node view. When oh, it's sort yeah. of all over the place. No, the spaghetti. <laughs> but I, I, I do like bird's nest too. That's also a very good one. <laughs> um, I also noticed too using backdrops, which are uh, a great tool for keeping yeah, the uh, node view organized. Yeah. 
uh, the good thing about backdrops, uh, they are they aren't only for show where something is. You can grab the the backdrop and put whatever you want, and you can change the color too. Oh, it's nice. And put some some a message to someone that will open your rig. It's very nice. <laughs> Yeah, I also uh, like that you pointed out to the, the the blending mode node, uh, which is just a fun thing to say. Um, but like the ability to uh, have colors uh, interact with each other can do really cool stuff for compositing yeah. and for yeah. for creating effects. Yeah. Oh, the you can compose at Tumboom, right? You you don't need to go to After Effects or yeah. other uh, software to to finish I mean, your animation is it, it is awesome. I think there's a lot of really handy things that you can do if you're able to uh, rig, uh, animate, draw, and then composite in the same software. Yeah. Because then, if you need to change something, yeah, you don't need to sure. export something and then import it. And yeah. uh, okay, wait, that file broke. I need to you know export it again. <laughs> Um, having yeah. it all in one one tool means that uh, it takes a lot less time for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing, uh, we're near the end of the interview, so I just wanted to ask, mm -hmm. is there anything um, that you didn't have a chance to show off with this rig yet? Mm. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh. Oh. Do you have any of the poses that you had from your demo reel? Just one second. I think I <laughs> it is an other uh, file. Just a minute. Mm, let me find Nadia here. I hope this this is the file. <laughs> Oh, here. Uh, amazing. <laughs> so I think it's really important, too, to show um, when you have a rig, uh, scenes of it actually in action. Yeah. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I put my hand on the, the rig after I finished the, the animation, so the mouth broke. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know what happened with the mouth. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but uh, I really enjoyed the pose. Yeah. I like how she sort of lifts off into the air before transforming into a bat. Um, yeah. Very evocative, very cool. Uh, oh, the hand here. The, the little change of drawings here. Yeah. I have I have a friend that is an animator that I show my animation um, to him and he was my supervisor in the moment. <laughs> he said, "Oh, you can change this, change that, blah blah blah," and I did did all the stuff that he he pointed, and the animation uh, turns out very amazing. Oh, that's so cool! Yeah. Oh. Th you you see the the head, the the leg here and a little bit of her underwear. That's why yeah. I did the, the legs for for little animations like like that with the the floating skirt. I think that that, that attention to detail also really stands out. People notice. Yeah. Um, oh, at least well, people who really enjoy animation. Yeah, one thing that I did uh, for this rig that I was um, I was a very uh, crazy about was um, at the Siri, Nadia doesn't scream bad, right? Only Laszlo. So I, I didn't have a sample of her, of her uh, screaming bad. So 
I had to make that and use AI to change my voice to her voice. <laughs> it was very fun to, to do that. <laughs> but I oh, that's think really cool. that I did, um, I was starting to make the, the smoke um, like uh, only one draw drawing, you know, um, one drawing for all the smoke. Then I saw that it would be much more fun to separate all the the smoke. And then for for this, I I renounced my first <laughs> thought, and then I did one frame with all the the little smokes because it would be mad uh, separating all the little blobs of smoke yeah i mean i think it's really cool because like this rig gets into character animation uh it gets into effects it does a lot of really really cool impressive um ambitious uh work uh so i just think it's really cool to highlight i hope the people download the rig check it out uh, i want to see all kinds of animation <laughs> Me with too. nausea in it <laughs> um, so we are almost out of time. Where can our audience go to find you or find more of your work on the web? Okay, uh, my tag is always Sarah Zatar in in all the platforms: Insta Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. The Gum Road is S uh, H Zatar. Um, but does it is Sarah Zatar for? all the the websites all right well thank you sarah for sharing a peek at your character mm -hmm. rig and thank you to our audience for tuning in thank artists you. can download a copy of the nausea rig on sarah's gumroad page and if you don't already have a copy of harmony premium artists can download a 21 day free trial from our website that is tuneboom.com and if you enjoyed today's discussion be sure to join us this coming Tuesday as Mari Ev, LaSalle, and Rebecca Kartsmark will be hosting an art stream on rigging and cutout animation techniques in Harmony Premium. So you won't want to miss it. Uh, be sure to tune in next time.